Каждое столетие с незапамятных времен начинается для нашей страны с войны с коллективным западом. О, мой гад, что это embarrassment. Это so embarrassing, man. Hello, Blazers. Сережа Бой Роман, your favorite neighborhood Russian. How are you doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. And in today's video, guys, we're going to be reacting to Russian propaganda's marvelous promotion campaign regarding the one year anniversary of the special military operation. Yes, guys, exactly as I'm recording this video right now, it is the 24th of February, and exactly one year ago, Russia launched this full scale attack on Ukraine, starting what, according to Russian propaganda, was supposed to be a three day long special military operation. And well, here we are an entire year later, Russia has become essentially a pariah in the world and Ukraine is still being destroyed for completely no reason whatsoever. You know, personally for me, this was one of the worst years of my life. I watched my country regress and turn into everything I dislike, where people who speak out for peace are kicked out of the country and called traitors and foreign agents, while people who support bloodshed are crowned as true patriots. But I cannot even imagine how terrible this year has been to Ukrainians. And I actually have a few Ukrainian friends that I talk to pretty regularly and, you know, I just feel like all the time. So yes, today is definitely a very tragic date, but I'm a YouTuber and my job is to entertain or at least to try to entertain. And in today's video, I want to tell you guys what happened in the last few days in Russia and how Russia is currently celebrating the one year anniversary of the special military operation. Now, since the one year anniversary is a pretty big deal, this time Russian propaganda decided to outdo itself and they basically had a whole roadmap of events with Vladimir Putin giving a special address to the people and also to the government and following up all of that with a grand and patriotic concerts with the viewers being paid to attend by the governments and uh, with Shaman of course as well how can I you know forget about the legends but hold your horses guys we'll get to it a little bit later first of all let's talk about Putin's address now on the 21st of February 2023 Putin gave a big speech to the Council of the Federation which is one of Russia's governmental bodies which was live streamed on the TV so it's very much a address to the Russian people as well now the thing you guys gotta realize about this speech that Putin gave is that a lot of people were very worried about this first of all on on Russian television, on pretty much every single major news TV network, they had a special window that showed the countdown to Putin's great speech. And honestly, seeing that got me kind of scared as well because, you know, you just see how many hours you have until impending doom. But also, the last time there was a countdown like this before Putin's speech was in February of 2022, just a few days before the invasion. Putin actually announced Russia recognizing the Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic as separate governments, which essentially led to the start of the special operation. So, I got pretty worried about this to be honest. A lot of rumors also were hanging around saying that Putin might announce the full mobilization in Russia or might actually close the borders in Russia not allowing anybody to leave and the speech was hyped up a lot in the media. However, ultimately nothing really happens. Putin basically gave his classic speech about the evil collective West that is out to get Russia and destroy it. Of course talks about the decay of morale and uh, destruction of the institute of gender in the West etc. And that was basically it. One major thing that Putin announced is that Russia is pulling out of uh, new starts which was was a treaty about nuclear disarmament between Russia and America. So yes guys, we're all going to die in a nuclear war, but in other news, that was pretty much it for Putin's speech. So yeah, the speech was over, but uh, propaganda wasn't done there because now it was time for a great, great patriotic concert. So on the 22nd of February 2023, Russia threw a special so-called demonstration concert in the Moscow Stadium of Luzhniki, with the official point being celebrating the Day of the Defenders, which is actually a Soviet holiday that is celebrated on the 23rd of February and it's supposed to be the day of the army essentially. So yeah, long story short, it was basically one of those patriotic Russian concerts that we've seen a bunch throughout the last year. Various sellout artists from Russia went on the stage, said very patriotic speeches, sang very patriotic war songs, and of course Vladimir Putin himself made an appearance as well, giving a speech. And the whole stadium was basically full of Z patriots with Russian flags scanned in URA. Well, except that it wasn't, because once again it was one of those events to which they basically sent out a bunch of people working governmental jobs like uh, people working at factories, students, probably under the threat of being fired because I've already said this is something that happened to my mom back in the day. My mom used to work in a governmental factory, a tractor factory, and she was asked multiple times throughout her career to go to pro-Putin demonstrations in Chirabinsk, my hometown, under the threat of being fired. Same thing happens to students and also most of the people apparently that were on this concert actually were there just because they got paid a whopping amount of 500 rubles 
for attendance. So here, for example, are some screenshots from a Telegram group chat of attendees to this demonstration concert and also of people coordinating the people. Do not sell anybody. If they come up to you and start asking questions, just say that you support the ideology and you love Russia a fuck ton. Yes, by the way, it's not me swearing, it's him swearing. Or don't even answer anything. I'm going to be supervised, so please do not pull any bullshit. And I'd like to say once again, do not tell anybody about the money. Fucking anybody. <laughs> Don't even discuss it with each other at this at this bullshit. <laughs> By the way, yes, he's referring to the patriotic concert as Huynya in this message, so... There's a ton of rats. They could come up to you, ask for cigarettes, and just talk to you friendly and ask stuff. If they find out something, I'm gonna be fired immediately. It is very, very strict over there. So yeah, long story short, pretty much every attendee at this very patriotic concert that's supposed to show, you know, overwhelming supports of Russians towards, you know, what's going on, was actually just full of people who got paid to attend, or people who were forced to attend. It's pretty much the exact repeat of what happened last year at the concert, which actually happened in the exact same stadium, Luzhniki, in March of 2022. It was also super patriotic, everybody was performing, Putin gave a speech, and then later, there were photos of like a ton of these Russian flags just being in a dumpster right after the concert ended, because these flags were just given to people to wave to make a good picture for the TV. And then these people are just like, what the fuck, what do I, do I need this flag for? I'm gonna just throw this shit out into the dumpster. This is the reality of modern Russia, guys. But yeah, now I guess what we should do is uh, react to some of the cringe that happened on this concert. Now, this concert also, like, it's basically a few hours long, so I'm not gonna watch the full thing, of course, because, you know, I value my mental health. But I do have a few moments that I want to show to you guys, so uh, let's strap into it. Dude, this is fucking insane. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say, what a shame, Vladimir Mashkov was actually a great actor, man. What's crazy though is that this guy has a daughter who's also an actress, and she's actually super pro-Ukraine, super anti-Z, and she doesn't only denounce Russia, but she actually denounces her own dad publicly. Absolutely insane, man. Just shows you how Russian families are kind of split right now because of this. And yeah, this impacts everybody. I don't speak to a few of my relatives either because of their position. <laughs> <laughs> this is complete fucking nonsense. Yeah, so they're showing like uh, different uh, military conflicts throughout Russia's history, basically points showing it off as like uh, that every single one of these military conflicts from back in the day were essentially Russia fighting against the collective West and the West aggression, which is complete fucking nonsense because Russia, the Russian Empire, was part of the Western world. The Russian royal family was literally related to the Western royal families. There was a reason why Nicholas II and George V looked so alike. <laughs> Самые кровопролитные в истории человечества. История себе не изменяет и сегодня. В начале 21 века мы опять противостоим Западу. <laughs> I'm sorry, my guy, but I think you forgot the fact that that was the land lease. <laughs> and also that the Soviet Union was allied with the United States and the UK and other Western countries against Nazi Germany. But of course, Russia was fighting against the collective West back then as well. <laughs> Oh my god, what an embarrassment. It's so embarrassing, man. I knew this actor Mashkov was Z, but holy shit, like, he cannot say this with a straight face, bro. When you literally cannot even get the history of the World War II right. What are we talking about? <laughs> no. No. No, no, please, no. Oh no, please, please, please don't butcher the legacy of Viktor Tsoi right now, please. First of all, this version of the song sounds like shit, like you're butchering it, okay? But this is also hilarious that they're using the song from Kino, Grupa Krovi, which is an anti-war song, by the way. Well, Russia is, of course, against war, right? <laughs> well, I guess according to their double think, it fits, though, because Russia, after all, is, you know, not waging war, it's stopping wars. <laughs> but Viktor Tsoi was literally one of the most anti-Soviet artists ever, and I guarantee you, I'm very, very sure that if he was alive to Today, he would not support this and he would not support the Soviet Union 2.0.
No. Man, it's absolutely insane how they took this absolutely beautiful song and butchered it so hard that it sounds like... I'm sorry, but it sounds like an SS march. Like, the way you sing in it, <laughs> it just really does. I'm sorry, it sounds evil. It sounds like fucking SS soldiers should be marching along to this. Like, what is this, bro? Victor Tso is turning in his grave right now. Moreover, by the way, one reason why this is even funny is because I talked about this in my last video. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. It's about how Russia cancels anti-Putin Nazis right now. But basically, Victor Tsoi is currently being censored by the Russian government. Government. Unironically, in modern Russia, if there's a Kino cover band that wants to perform a show somewhere in Russia, the authorities ask those cover bands to not perform certain questionable controversial songs. For example, the legendary song Piri Mien. And since a lot of youth in Russia won't change right now as well, this is obviously a song we have to ban. So it's just, you know, amazing to me that this government is literally canceling Viktor Tsoi, okay? Canceling other legendary musicians, but also is using Tsoi's music to push their Z message. This is just like such a perfect example of Russian media's and Russian propaganda's double think. It's actually incredible. <laughs> Dude, I'm very happy to see that Dmitry Dyuzhev's uh, cocaine still holds on, you know? <laughs> He's still very much under the influence, what can I say? Uh... <laughs> okay, now let's check out the next song. Now this one, you guys, I'm sure are gonna love as well. So this is Russian culture and Russian music that's acceptable to the government these days. I, I get it. I get it, man. By the way, just for context, 333 means uh, it's like the command they give when artillery is shooting. So essentially, you know, they're, I guess, you know, the song is celebrating the shelling of Ukrainian cities, I guess. No comments. Let's hear out the second verse. I'm sure you guys are going to love it as well. <laughs> I mean, guys, really no comment, to be honest. This is like, you know, I usually like to not pride myself over people or anything, but this is like, this is bidla culture. This is music for people with the IQ level lower than that of 90, pretty sure, you know, if it's sort of around Sneeko's IQ, I would say. I mean, it's not like the guy's face exactly has a lot of intellect on it or something. I don't know, man. I don't know. I really have no commentary, to be honest, guys, you know? <laughs> I already said this in previous videos as well, you know, like, I'm just speechless, you know, let's just, you know, yeah, that was that, that was that, I wanna die, that's all I gotta say here, let's move on. <laughs> Bro, what is this, war criminal, <laughs> war criminal rap? <laughs> what the fuck is going on, bro? <laughs> Also, by the way, why do the, uh, like, the empty seats right there kind of look like the anti-war Russian flag, by the way? You might want to fix that next time you do, uh, you do one of these demonstrations. Because, yes, there's a lot of Russian flags here, but also this looks like anti-war Russians protesting here in the corner, you know? That's what it looks like. Just gotta fix that, guys. I'm looking out for you, okay? <laughs> I know, dude, I know. <laughs> dude, what the fuck is this, man? Weakest Russian male, by the way. <laughs> dude, this is even cornier than the first concert. Now we have, like, the next People's Republic soldier rappers. What is this, man? Dude, I fucking hate this, man. Not only is it patriotic rap, in which he talks about that uh, there will be a red flag above Berlin soon. <laughs> and also they're using the motif and the chorus of the song Katyusha, which is like a classic Second World War song, okay? Now, I actually love that song, to be honest. Like, I was taught to sing it as a little kid in school, by heart. You know, and it's like a song that is associated with me with defeat of fascism. And you know, I don't really exactly feel like your viewpoints and your worldviews actually kind of coincide with what your grand 
grandfather or great grandfather fought for against the Nazis. Now, there's also a particularly messed up part of this entire uh, concert, which is when uh, apparently they brought out children from the Ukrainian city of Mariupol on the stage to essentially thank the Russian soldiers for saving their lives, which is. Uh, let's check it out. <laughs> А помните Аню Науменко? Она здесь сейчас хочет сказать важные слова. Спасибо. Анечка, умничка, не, не стесняйся, говори. Мы с тобой, мы рядом. Спасибо дяде Юрий за то, что он меня, мою сестру и сотни тысяч детей спас с Мариуполя. Я чуть-чуть подзаб... Yeah, I wonder why she said I forgot what I'm supposed to say. Maybe because these are pre-written and... How cynical, how disgusting. Using children from a city that was destroyed as a tool of propaganda. Absolutely appalling. I think I'm just gonna skip ahead, guys. I don't I do not want to look at this. But guys, fuck all of this, right? Because you know what we're really here for, of course? We are, of course, here for the legend himself, our favorite musician of all time, Shaman. Yes, guys, unsurprisingly, Shaman did take part in his concert, and it was very patriotic, so let's check it out. <laughs> guys, guys, drip check, drip check. <laughs> Green jacket with Russian flag on the sides, huge ass cross, shirt saying Yaruski, I'm Russian, classic, uh, for his song, obviously. And guys, notice this, Shaman has changed his haircut. The times of the weed braids are gone. Now I guess he joined the Hitler Jugend or something. I guess that's like the, uh, the look that he's going for here, but uh... <laughs> Yeah, classic song that he's performed like a billion times at this point at all of these patriotic concerts. Let's rise up. The truth is on our side, you know. Keep telling yourself that. I'm sure if you tell yourself that hundreds more times, then the truth really will be on your side. <laughs> I've got no fucking clue what I'm doing, guys. You just know that, you know, Shaman's very heterosexual aura is just, you know, making me act, act up. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. But yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. A bunch of these useless Z artists and performers, you know, spoke out and gave their little speeches talking about the upcoming victory. But anyway, let's skip all past that and see what Putin had to say, because that's like the crown jewel of the entire concert, right? <laughs> Мощное, огромное, я бы так сказал, мистическое и святое, недаром одна из самых известных молитв начинается со слов «Отче наш», «Отче», «Отец». И в этом есть что-то очень близкое каждому человеку. Мы ведь говорим тоже и «Родина мать». If Russia is my family, then I've never seen a more abusive family and a more abusive father. Uh, figure. <laughs> I am a child of abuse, dude. And I should be treated as such. Сегодня в рамках специальной военной операции вот мы здесь с вами собрались на, по сути, праздничное мероприятие, но я знаю, вот сейчас только идет бой на наших исторических рубежах за наших людей. Его ведут такие же такие же мужественные бойцы, которые здесь стоят сейчас, рядом с нами. Они сражаются героически, мужественно, храбро. Dear God, when is this gonna end? When is this? This! This! All of it! When is it gonna end? Sorry, guys. Just a bit of a... Krieg Dushi, you know, that's what I would describe it as. <laughs> and yeah, that was pretty much the entire concert. Honestly, guys, you know, I think I've had my daily dose of this. Uh, I'm gonna go to the gym now right after the filming this video and rip fucking rip weights because I'm pissed. This video isn't actually me making content for you guys. It's actually in a, a way for me to get mad so that I can go and uh, kick ass at the gym and get my muscles bigger. So, but yeah, guys, what can I say? Uh, I don't know. I don't got nothing to say, quite honestly. Like I said, the world sucks. I don't know. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video at least. Hopefully, if 
find something entertaining in it. Uh, daily dose of authoritarian depression from no fuckers bangers, like always. I hope you guys did enjoy this video, though. If you guys did, please make sure to slap the like on it. As well, guys, as usual, if you want to support me additionally, you can go to the link down in the description, become a YouTube member. It's basically an easy way to donate to me monthly, and it helps me out a lot. You can also do a super thanks underneath this video. And yeah, guys, that is going to be pretty much it for today's video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.